just the the defense for Tennessee that is the main thing that right now has me I mean you can probably tell <laughs> the way that I'm talking like absolutely giddy you watch them operate and it is just on a complete other level than where it's been in the past few years with with Heibel and with the offense that you have with Nico at the helm barring any injuries this is I, we we talked about it before the season even before we watched a single snap th- there was the potential here with Nico to do something special. And I, I think it is now abundantly clear that that's a hundred percent true, that that really is the case that you have that chance that if you capitalize on the big moments, you, you can make this playoff uh, and, and probably make some noise. So I, that's really exciting. Now let's move to Nico in this game. I would say his performance was about on par with what you would probably expect from a guy who is a bona fide five star, essentially playing his first real game. Uh, you know, the bowl game, real game for sure. Iowa, a good team, but it's a bowl game. It's just kind of weird. And y- y- you never know how seriously to take those. Kind of the same with a game against uh, an FCS opponent like Chattanooga. But this, I mean, NC State is not, not a good football team. But ultimately, they're going to be middling in the ACC. They're going to be all right. I, I bet they give Clemson a game in a couple weeks. They could they could, they could, could win the ACC. They really like, could. <laughs> I think it'll be Miami, but who knows, really. Over there. Seriously. Yeah. That league is is wide, wide, wide open. And, and you just have a guy who's just getting his feet under him and has shown clear as day that he is uber talented. When he gets towards the upper end of his ability – he will be one of the best, if not the best quarterback in America for you. And you're just, you're seeing him just get, you know, get his sea legs. Like that is all that was happening in that game. And you said, I think he got progressively better just in that game alone. Mm-hmm. He got more comfortable and it was clear. I, I don't know uh, what all your thoughts were about Nico now, Zach. I think first off, one thing you can tell a lot by really how talented and how good a player is by the other team's game plan. And clearly, NC State had a lot of respect for Nico, his arm talent, and him as a player. They're dropping guys in the coverage, trying to take away stuff over the top. I mean, that shows you just kind of the respect they had for for Nico. That's the kind of stuff you do to Joe Burrow in the NFL, to to Patrick Mahomes. And and they're doing it to a redshirt freshman who just turned 20 years old uh, a couple of weeks ago. I think he was, you know, like you said, there were some signs of youth. You know, that first interception, he admitted that he was trying to force something that wasn't there. And I think that's that's a good learning moment, really. I mean, you yeah, you never want to throw an interception. But if you do, it's important that you learn from it. And and it, those can be really beneficial. I mean, you throw one in a game like that where it doesn't really hurt you. Uh, you know, nobody's going to really remember that interception at the end of the season. Maybe he learns from that. And he's, he's going to face coverages like this again, obviously. I mean, you're going to see a lot of this this season, probably. And if you don't see as many deep passes, it's kind of like, again, referencing Mahomes, the Chiefs, you know, last season where, where teams really played them like that and they didn't have those explosive plays. They were just kind of having to attack defenses a little differently. And Tennessee is, you know, with their 12 personnel that they broke out against NC State, which really caught uh, – caught NC State off guard because I hadn't seen that on film yeah. from Tennessee. They, they're really adjusting their offense to, you know, battle against the way that, that teams are playing their offense. I think he figured it out pretty well and started taking what the defense gave him and was able to efficiently move the ball down the field. You know, only had a couple hundred passing yards, 220, 222, I think, but he didn't have to throw for 400 yards to put 50 points on the board. You're able to run the ball. You're able to connect on some of those short passes. Get your tight ends involved in the game. Use his legs when he had to. He wasn't, even being a young quarterback, it didn't seem like he was looking to run immediately. He kind of picked and chose his spots. And there was a a couple of spots, like there was a big fourth down there uh, right in the third quarter. I mean, that was a big drive. That that could have been NC State holds Tennessee there to a field goal maybe. They can maybe get back in the game. You got a fourth down close to the red zone. You use Nico's legs to to pick up the first down. Then a couple of plays later, you know, you, you throw a touchdown to Miles Kitzelman and the game, you pull away from there. So he knows when to use his legs. He's learning a little bit to take what the defense gives him. We know he can throw the deep ball. He connected with the squirrel on one. I, you know, it's everything we've expected it to be. I think there, there was no grand takeaways for me other than the fact that I thought he was really poised 
and and faced yes. a little bit of adversity and responded extremely well to it in the moment. I mean, that's what impressed me the most, I'd say. The fact that he he threw a, a pretty bad interception and then flipped right around and on the very next drive scored a touchdown. That's it right there. That's that's the thing that you want to see in a nutshell. As you said, it's it's great uh, that, that it happened in this game where it was essentially inconsequential. It wasn't in that exact moment inconsequential because the game was still close at that point. But on the whole, it was inconsequential now that hindsight 2020. Uh, and that that's fine. Now, a lot of people said, oh, we didn't see anything out of, out of Thornton, Brazel, Brew, like nothing, none of the receivers. And and I don't think that this was the game for for that. They they really emphasized the tight ends, as Zach said, and and s- switched up the look there. And they just they adapted to what NC State gave them, and NC State did expressly the thing that they needed to do to take away the the long balls. And and you know they they tried they emphasized more than anything taking away the pass. And I think that's why you saw that in Tennessee just kind of adapted around it, just sort of took a side street and then figured it out. And, and the fact that they can do that with Nico as early as he is in his career is impressive that alone. And I, I you're going to see plenty out of those guys when the opportunities present themselves. Um, you, you know, Brazel will be the guy that, that catches that bomb instead of squirrel eventually. And they and, just miss brew on one. I mean, if that's yes, if that's Jalen, so if that's Squirrel. That's probably a catch and a touchdown. Brew's not quite as fast as those guys, and, and that was a little bit of the difference. Maybe Nico to put a little more air under it. I, I just missed it. So there's there's still some opportunities there, and you know there. You think about when Hendon Hooker really had his breakout season in 2022. He had a whole year of running the offense under his belt. So things will get even better as the season goes along. And Hypo really preached that today when he was talking to the media. As good teams continue to get better throughout the season. You don't want to play your best football in September. You need to be playing your best football in November and December and January. And I hope that's you know where this is building towards. Ethan says you can't run drop eight and hope to win. Letting Tennessee run for 250 yards is a guaranteed loss. I don't see another team trying to run a 3-3-5, honestly. I agree. I'll be interested I- to see how other teams really do. I mean, because yes. so, do you sell out to, to 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 beat the run and make Nico prove that he can beat you over the top? Is that you know, is that what we're going to see from teams? Maybe it's obviously Oklahoma has a former defensive coordinator and Brent Venables as their coach. I I'm very interested to see exactly where he goes because he's got some Big Twelve roots too. You know, from before his time at Clemson. That's true. Uh, it it just it, unless Nico has a full-blown off day it's a pick your poison situation with tennessee's offense do do you want to get beat over the top or do you want to get run on those are your two options you don't there's not another one those that's it <laughs> so i mean D- dylan sampson is a full-blown dog and and he, how about deshaun bishop the way he's running yes oh man what I, a revelation I, that that's so great and and obviously i, I personally as a not an an alum, but a former attendee of Carnes High School, uh, I I love that. Ultimately, I graduated from Hardin Valley, their biggest rival here in town. But uh, yeah, it's I I love that. I mean, it's it's awesome to have a little kid like that, and he he is another one that that I think in time he he has a little bit of that that dog in him, and, and could could be that guy, even though he came in pretty unlauded. Um, I think you just have a dude who's who's nose to the grindstone and, and clearly wants it bad. He's, he's clearly the number three. I get. I don't know. Seldom with Kim. Seldom was out in this game. I don't think Khalifa Keith even received a carry. I think it was just Samson and Bishop the entire night. So it was just a yeah. two running back night, which you don't see often from from Tennessee. I know they did it against Florida last season. It was pretty controversial when Dylan Sampson didn't didn't get any action in that game. But they usually try to mix in uh, three, but Bishop was running well, so there was really no need to. Uh, him stepping up, he's, that tells you they're also pretty confident with him in pass protection as well. I think that's a huge thing for this offense, and it, it'll keep Samson even fresher. It really is cool. And I that has been an impressive element all the way through Heupel's entire time. He has yet to have a truly, quote-unquote, elite running back, and he's still finding guys that are absolute dudes. Like, I don't, I don't know how he's done it, 
but none of these guys so far have been a five star. Yeah, that's you true. You know, for, former All American, nothing, nothing like that. I guess Cam Seldon's probably the closest. And he was a four star, maybe top one hundred, but he still wasn't that elite, like five star, top yeah. twenty player. They haven't had one of those. They haven't had one at at tight end really yet, as well. Maybe they get Kendra Harrison out of the twenty twenty six class, but. That's interesting. I hadn't really thought about that. I, I wonder why that is, and I wonder if that changes in the future when you see Jalen Wright going to the NFL and the success that Dylan Sampson's having. I hope it does. They they definitely do gravitate towards a certain type of back. Obviously, that little more you know shorter, lower center of gravity, speed guy. Um, but I'd love to see what they could do with a bruiser. Like, it, maybe they just don't ever go that direction. Um, but I, I, that would be fun. 